we're all looking forward to this wonderful, beautiful Yom Tov of Sukkot, which is known as Zman Simchasenu, the, the time of the year which everyone is happy. And there's another mitzvah besides the sitting in, in the Sukkot, as we all know, the Dalad Minim, the four species, the Lul of the Esrik, Hadassim, and Arabis, and the seemingly two different mitzvahs. One is sitting in the Sukkot, and one is taking those four species and shocking them together. What's the idea of these two mitzvahs? And why is it as Mansur Chasenu? Why is it considered the happy time? And the, 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 the verse says very clearly it's a happy time because people are naturally happy then. Because it's a time when people take, go out in the field and bring everything in. They harvest everything which grew over the summer. Now's the time to, to cut it and bring it into the warehouses. And you see their abundance and you say, wow, and everyone's in a jolly mood because of all the, the, the wheat and, and crop they brought in from the fields. The question is, however, not always everyone is so happy when you bring in your stuff. You know, when you check your bank account, some people are excited and some people get depressed. They say, oh my gosh, what's going on? There's nothing in my account. So why should it make you happy naturally when you bring in the stuff from the field? What if it was a bad year and not too much grew? The answer is, as the Mishnah teaches us, Asia Ashi has Samech One is never happy unless you know what you own. You count your blessings, that's when you're happy. Up until you don't bring the crops into the field, you're not going to be happy because you don't even know what you own. When you bring them in, you focus on what you do have, that's what makes you happy. The idea of these four species, of the Lulav and the Esrik, it's commonly known that those are, they represent all different types of Jews. The Esrik has a delicious smell and a delicious taste. And the Lulav has a delicious taste. Well, not if you bite into the Lulav, but they're fruits of the Lulav, but it has no smell. And the Adasim has a great smell, has no taste, and the Aravis has no taste and no smell. And as I said, commonly known, it represents all the different types of Yidden. Some are, have a lot of mitzvahs, some don't have so many mitzvahs, some are big Torah scholars, some are not to so much, some are such big Torah scholars. But you take them all together, you tie them together to represent the whole Jews are one. And we appreciate every year. But the idea of what I just mentioned of Sukkot, to appreciate what you have, you, over Sukkot, you take all those Yidden and you zoom into them and you look at every single Yidden and you say, wow, look how special the Yidden are. When it comes to the seventh day of Sukkot, we put down the Esrik and the Lulav and we pick up the Aravis. The Aravis is the lowest Yid has absolutely nothing, no good taste and no good smell. And we make entire yomtim, entire holiday just out of the lowest yid. Because when you focus on what you have, you're happy just in the physical sense and the spiritual sense too. We have no idea how special each and every yid is. And over circus, when you take all those Jews together, we bring them in the circus and we dance together and we, we appreciate and we experience the beauty of every single yid. By doing that every single day, you reach a climax, it's the last day of Sukkot, and we say, wow, look how special even the lowest year that I don't need the Asherah to make me happy. Even the Mayor Rovers, the small Jew, which has almost nothing, but you're a Jew, you're a Jew, you're unbelievable and you're awesome. That's the message of the Sukkot and the Lulav. Be happy where you have, focus what you have, it will make you happy in the physical sense and in the spiritual sense. Wishing you all a wonderful, happy Yom Tov.